Welcome to Good News Heroes on Unite Radio. I'm Jake. Are you excited for a new Good News Hero story? Me too. Today, Piper and her uncle Mike are working on a project. Let's join them and see what it is. Hey, Piper. What? You're already here? Good to see you too. My day was great. Thanks for asking. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be rude. I just... I didn't expect you to come so fast. So, do you still need help building a science fair display? No. Well, I mean, yes. Well, I think so. I don't know. Are you doing okay, Pipes? Not really. Want to talk about it? I'm just really nervous about the science fair. We got to pick our category of science we could do, but my teacher asked us to do an experiment, and I'm not good at experiments. Hmm. Do you know what category you want to do? Life science. Because I get to talk about animals. You are great at talking about animals. So what's the problem? I'm good about talking about the facts. I don't have to make them up. I just learn and remember them. My teacher always tells us what experiments to do for science class. But this time, I have to come up with my own hypothesis and everything all by myself. What if I can't think of a good idea to experiment? What if my experiment doesn't work and the judges think I'm stupid? And what if I'll be a horrible veterinarian? Oh, Piper... I've been reading my animal books all night trying to think of an hypothesis to test, but I can't think of anything, so I don't know what my display looks like, and you came all the way over here for nothing. Maybe signing up for the science fair was a bad idea. I should just quit. Then they can't judge me. You can't quit. That's what Dad said. Why does Dad always tell me I can't quit things? Because quitting when you're nervous doesn't fix anything. If good news heroes quit when things got hard, would they have such great stories? No, I guess not. Every good news hero got nervous and scared, even when they were your age. Like who? Wait, let's get Logan! 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 What? We're starting a good news hero story! Sweet! Hey, Uncle Mike! When we were at Grandma and Grandpa's, they told us about a World War II good news hero named, uh, named Jake DeShazer. Are there any other World War II good news heroes? A lot happened in that time. Hmm. There were lots of World War II good news heroes. We can definitely talk about one like, oh, oh I, I know, like Corrie Ten Boom. She's got a tough story, but a really important one. Corrie was born in 1892 in the Netherlands, also called Holland, to a very busy household. Her dad, Casper, was a clockmaker and owned a clock store. Corey's mom, Cornelia, as well as her aunts, stayed home to take care of the family and the house, which they called the Baye. Growing up, Corey was scared of everything. The dark, going to school, fighting, and times were different back then, so sometimes she saw a lot of things that scared her when she was little. Dad! Dad! Corey, what's wrong? Are you hurt? It was so scary, Dad. I was walking home and there were these two men on the street fighting and yelling. And then they started punching each other. And then a policeman came and arrested them. Oh, I see. That does sound scary. I hate fighting, Dad. And now those people are probably going to be put in dark, cold cells. They'll be sad and lonely. That is sad, Corey. But, my dear, you don't have to be scared, and there's something you can do to help them. There is? What? Remember what we talked about after you believed in Jesus as your Savior? How God is always with you to answer your prayers? Yeah. Well, you can pray for those men you saw fighting. That's the best way anyone can help them. It sounds like they need to know the love and forgiveness of Jesus. Why don't you talk to Jesus about it now? Okay, Dad. Jesus, please help the men I saw fighting. Help them know you and be saved. And Jesus, can you help all those people on our street? It's Maidestrat Street. And can you help me not be afraid when scary things happen? Amen. Cory, is there something wrong with your food? No, Tauntauna. Then why are you barely eating? 
I'm sorry. I'm not very hungry. This is unusual for you, child. Did something happen today? Cornelia, what happened on your outing today? <sighs> Nolly, Cory, and I went to visit the neighbors who just lost their newborn baby. Oh, I see. What happened during your visit? The mother let us visit the child to say goodbye. I wasn't sure if Cory was ready, but they live in a one-room apartment, so there was no avoiding it. Oh, I see. I'm so sorry, Cory. Well, I have something that can help all of us as we say goodbye to our neighbor's child. Let me get my Bible. What if my mom and dad die, like the baby did? And then my tantas and brother and sisters. What if they all die except me? Then I'll be left all alone. I don't want to be alone. I can't be alone. Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea. God is my refuge and help in trouble. The Bible says God is always with me. And the Psalm says, God helps us during times of trouble. So even if my family dies, God will be with me. God will be with me no matter what. But God, I still don't want my family to leave me. Please let them stay with me for a long time. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Selah. There now. Do you feel calm enough to get some good sleep tonight, Corey? I think so. But Dad, I'm still a little scared. I talked to God about it while you were reading, but I don't think I'm brave enough. What if you and Mother die and I'm left all alone? Mother gets sick a lot. What if one day the sickness kills her? I don't think I'll be brave enough to live all alone. Corey, when you take the train somewhere, when do I give you the money for the ticket? When I need to buy the ticket? That's right. Have I ever given you train money weeks in advance? No, I don't need it then. Exactly. And our Father in Heaven does exactly the same with us. Right now, you have me, your mother, your aunts, and your siblings with you. And I hope we stay with you for a very long time. But if your mother or I or your aunts die, only then will God give you the strength you need. But since it hasn't happened, you don't need to be afraid now. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. I think I feel better now. Good. Now sleep well, my dear. God will help me be brave when I need it. I promise I'll never forget that. And Corey never forgot it. And God did something else for Corey. After that, the things that used to scare her so badly didn't seem so scary anymore. She was learning to trust Jesus when she was afraid. She was. The more Corey remembered the truths of God's promises, the more she knew she could count on him. If Corey's going to be a good news hero, she's going to need to trust God. She will. Even when she was a little girl, God was preparing Corey for the big plan he had for her when she grew up. But you're not going to tell us today, are you? What? You would accuse me of leaving my favorite niece and nephew on a cliffhanger? Yes. yes. Well, you're right. But don't you feel better, Piper? Hmm. Yeah. See? I didn't come over for nothing. And now that your nerves are calmer, try thinking about a hypothesis again. Okay. Thanks, Uncle Mike. What job was God preparing Corey for? When it comes, will she remember to trust God's help? Tune in next time to Good News Heroes to find out.